Once upon a time, legend has it that the moon goddess and the demon of the night fought tirelessly for seven days due to their opposing beliefs. The world was turned upside down and the battle seemed never ending as both were evenly matched. Finally, in order to protect the world, the moon goddess accepted the sacrifice of her life. It is said that she passed on her power to her descendants to continue her noble mission. Who is the moon's descendant? Subscribe to Woa Fairy Tales to discover more. And then the day finally arrived. Diana, the princess with the moon-shaped birthmark on her forehead, cried as she was born. On the day Diana was born, people once again basked in the gentle golden moonlight. Her crying put an end to the long and dreary days as the cold and dark nights were enveloped. Diana was always a wise child and grew up with praise. At the young age of four, she learned the art of summoning magical beasts. With such a good start, everyone expected Diana to become even more exceptional. Diana not only was not allowed to fail, but she also always had to be in first place. As a result, whenever she saw someone skilled in something, Diana had to pursue them to strive to do better than them. As time passed, the pressures that weighed heavily on her shoulders turned Diana from a lively and joyful girl into a hesitant and fearful one. But Princess Diana has magic powers. Why can't she avoid the ball? She wasn't sure what that feeling was. But Diana was constantly exhausted and drained. Her sleep was restless, and at times, she lost interest in everything, including magic. Chubby Cat, I don't know what happened to me. Everything is going wrong. Chubby Cat, I've given it my all, but my performance keeps getting worse. Today, for the first time, I was even beaten by someone else in the magic exam. In that moment, I was truly frightened. My ears were ringing and I couldn't hear a thing. And the only magic I can still perform is summoning Chubby Cat. Magic has forsaken me. Oh my, how disappointing. What am I going to do now? If only Chubby Cat could speak, it would be so much easier. The queen passed away early, and the king thought that the lack of maternal guidance caused Diana to become like this. So, the king decided to take a queen consort to train Princess Diana. Unlike the strictness of the king, the queen consort was very gentle and took great care of the princess. I heard that the princess has not been feeling well lately. This medicine is a panacea in our village and can help relieve stress. Whenever you feel tense, take one pill. Diana did not immediately use this strange medicine. <laughs> However, her worries became increasingly uncontrollable and the regular magic competition was approaching. She had no other choice but to close her eyes and swallow the pill. The medicine really worked, and Diana was less anxious, gradually regaining the use of her magic. But it was only temporary relief. Diana was like a burning flame, consuming one pill after another. One night, Diana realized that the medicine had run out and went to the queen consort's room to ask for more. That's how she discovered a terrible secret. The queen consort was actually a black magic sorcerer. Oh, mirror, mirror, please tell me where will Princess Diana lose the power of the moonlight? Your Highness has consumed all the medicine. Without the protection of the moon, you will take over this kingdom. Huh? Right at this time, 
The Queen Consort found Diana, who should have used magic to escape but couldn't. Her uneasiness turned her into a cat. Oh, the curse in the medicine bottle has taken effect. <laughs> well, what's happening? You'll find out when you get to the other side, my obedient daughter. <laughs> Chubby Cat, save me! Chubby Cat appeared and rescued Diana from the danger. Quickly, Princess Diana, climb onto my back. Oh my! Are you really talking, Chubby Cat? <sighs> what should I do now? Why did everything turn up like this? With your current appearance, no one will believe you're a Princess Diana. They might even chase you away. The only solution huh? now is to find the Moonlight Scepter of the Moon Goddess to defeat the Queen Consort and break the curse. When they arrived huh? at the location where the old Moonlight Scepter had been sealed, they found that someone had beaten them to it. It was Ryan the Fox. As soon as Diana appeared, the boundary was broken as she was the descendant of the Moon Goddess. However, Ryan had been quicker and had already taken the scepter. <laughs> hey, thief! Give it back to me now! If you can't keep it, then find the new one! Oh, huh? what a romantic atmosphere! <gasps> Calm down, little cat. I haven't asked about you yet. Let me welcome the handsome fox prince first. Ryan, it's time to hand over the scepter to me. It turned out that Ryan had made a deal with the Queen Consort. She had given him the crown of power, which would allow him to conquer the hearts of the people and become the king. In exchange, he was supposed to find the Moonlight Scepter and give it to her. During the search, the Queen Consort had turned Ryan into a fox to force him to work for her. It's not that easy, old lady. If I bring it to you, what if you turn me into an animal again? If you want it, turn me into a human first. Don't saw off the branch you're sitting on. <clears throat> Chubby Cat, save him! Ryan still had the scepter, so Diana and Chubby Cat had to save him and escape. Diana, follow my trail! I will hold her off! Remember, using the scepter requires a magic spell! However, the Queen Consort was very quick. To allow Diana and Ryan to escape successfully, Chubby Cat had to sacrifice himself. No! Go! This was a big shock to Diana, when her only close relative, who had helped her, was no longer there. Even when she tried to summon Chubby Cat many times, nothing happened. Even when she used the Moonlight Scepter, which she thought would help her regain her magic. Why? Why won't you appear? Chubby Cat is the only one left in my life! Hmm. That's right! The magic spell! It's not that easy. Huh? Ouch! How dare you! Don't expect me to show you how anymore. Don't you have a way to do it? Do you trust me to throw you into a river to be eaten by a fish? <laughs> Calm down, handsome guy. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. The special thing about this magic spell was that it only worked at the moment of the transition to midnight huh? on the night of the fullest moon of the season. The day was set for three days later, and if this time was missed, huh? it would take a long time for another opportunity. Ryan, who had the same goal huh? of defeating the Queen Consort, made an effort to help Diana regain her magic. They realized that during times when Diana was comfortable, she could temporarily transform into a human, even if it was just for a moment. There must be something that's causing you to panic like this, right? For the first time in her life, someone listened to the pressure of having to become number one as a princess. At the same time, 
Diana also learned that Ryan was hmm. actually a prince, but huh? his mother was a concubine, <laughs> and they both came from humble backgrounds, so they lived their lives in misery. The more Ryan tried to show himself as good, the more he was seen as fighting huh? for the throne. To protect loved ones, huh? Ryan had no choice but to become the strongest, <laughs> even if it meant losing himself in desire. Mm. I said that I was exhausted, but no one listened. Why wouldn't they listen? What about me? Two hearts, scarred by every step, <laughs> drew closer. Diana could remain human for a longer time, enough to carry out the plan. On the day of the fight, the two infiltrated the palace. Huh? Precisely the room where the queen consort was practicing her magic. Seeing Diana huh? regain her human form, the old queen was extremely surprised. Well, my daughter found a way to turn back into a human again, hasn't she? But it seems like it's only temporary, isn't it? Let's see how long your silver tongue lasts. So many words. My shadow demon, take good care of Prince Ryan. Huh? Don't worry about me. Seize the opportunity. As the full moon approached, the moonlight energy spilled through the window and flooded the room. Stop kidding around. You can only cast a spell relying on someone like you. What kind of moon air are you? You even lost your first place to ordinary people. Challenged with pressure, Diana started to tremble. Before the chant was even completed, Diana transformed back into a cat. The moment of the fullest moon passed, meaning they couldn't use the power of the moon scepter anymore. My little princess, now there's no way to save you. But unexpectedly, Ryan sacrificed his crown and threw it towards Diana, creating a shield to protect her from the curse. Oddly enough, without the crown of power, Ryan could turn back into a human. I understand now. When I don't stubbornly pursue power, the curse will be broken. Diana, don't try to recite the Moonlight Incantation anymore. Use your own magic. Be true to yourself. Diana remembered the happiness she felt when she created magic. and remembered when her friend, the chubby cat, protected her. Diana bravely recited the familiar incantation, which was the first incantation she recited when she was young. The magic light shone powerfully, and the fat cat appeared in a much stronger form than before. It strode towards the queen consort. Instead of being defeated, when the light disappeared, the queen consort transformed into a beautiful and gentle moon fairy. She was originally a servant of the moon goddess, with a task of finding the air and assisting them in protecting the world. I realized that instead of directly helping the princess become more confident, it was necessary for her to overcome the challenges herself. Meanwhile, Ryan was the reincarnation of the Night Demon, the opposite ideology of the Moon Goddess before. The Queen Consort helped resolve their past grudges, while also learning a lesson herself. By sacrificing his crown for someone else, which was also abandoning his ambition, Prince Ryan was able to become human again, similarly like Princess Diana. Without the pressure of surpassing others, being true to oneself was when she was the strongest. Ryan and Diana understood each other, becoming close friends and journeying together to protect a peaceful and beautiful world. The story ends here. Thank you for your support. Every view is a big encouragement for us to create more interesting stories. 
Don't forget to subscribe to WOA Fairy Tales to help us reach 1 million subscribers soon. Now, share with WOA Fairy Tales your feelings after watching today's story. See you in the upcoming episode! <laughs> Once upon a time in a vast and magnificent forest, there stood a grand and majestic castle. It was the dwelling place of the Unicorn Tribe. The Unicorn King had a remarkably beautiful princess named Maya. She was cherished and dotted on by her royal father. Maya was innocent and pure, to the extent that even the birds dared not sing loudly for fear of startling her. However, nobody is perfect. And Maya could be stubborn and clumsy at times, which often led to comical situations. As time passed by, Maya turned 18 and blossomed into a more beautiful and radiant young lady than ever before. Her unicorn horn shimmered in seven dazzling colors. Nevertheless, her horn became sharper and more powerful, making people somewhat wary of being near her. During a training session, Maya accidentally injured one of her attendants with her horn. This filled Maya with deep remorse and sat down. Oh no! Therefore, the Unicorn King wished to find a perfect husband for Maya, someone who could take care of her and govern the kingdom in the future. Quickly initiate the contest to find a suitor! Excited by the news, many princesses from neighboring kingdoms visited to apply for the competition. They all hoped for a chance to catch Maya's eye. Well, Prince Mello was the first to have an audience with Maya. Your Majesty, beautiful Princess Maya, today I have brought you a multitude of splendid outfits made from the fur of rare creatures. Huh, I have something for you to see as well. Maya led Mello to her dressing room. He was astounded by the extensive collection of dresses and garments she possessed. Fish Prince Eric entered with an air of arrogance. He presented Maya with precious pearls and treasures from the deep ocean. These are the most valuable possessions of the deep ocean. If you choose me, all these treasures will belong to you. Maya glanced at them indifferently. I already have these things. Eric felt embarrassed and quickly departed. It seemed that Maya was not attracted to material wealth. Even with all the extravagance, she longed for simple love. Father, I will seek my own destiny. I want to decide my own happiness. Lock the princess in her chamber. She shall not set foot outside the castle. <gasps> Release me! <laughs> set me free! <laughs> As night fell, Maya sat sorrowfully in a corner of her room, gazing outwards. <gasps> Tears streamed down her face as she felt the suffocating control imposed by her father. The king is so controlling. I must escape from this place. <laughs> Helpless, she slumped down but suddenly startled at a hoarse voice. Princess Maya. It turned out to be Amel, the elderly attendant. Amel was the closest person to Maya after her royal father. Having cared for Maya since childhood, she held a deep affection for her. <gasps> oh, Emil! Princess, leave here quickly. Go seek the happiness you've longed for. <gasps> Thank you, Emil! Maya felt liberated and joyfully ran out of the castle. <laughs> Under the veil of a mystical night, Maya ran swiftly 
not knowing where she was headed. But she believed that escaping the castle would lead her to happiness. Unexpectedly, Maya stumbled and fell into a deep pit. She struggled to find a way out. Is anyone up there? Please help! <gasps> Maya cried and trembled in fear until she exhausted herself. As morning broke, Maya was awakened by loud calls. Girl, are you all right? Girl? <gasps> Maya slowly regained her senses and looked up to find a handsome and gallant figure before her. <laughs> My destiny has arrived. Don't be afraid, girl. I will help you. Maya's heart <laughs> skipped a beat, Ooh. captivated by his handsomeness, forgetting that she needed to escape. Ricky swiftly lowered a rope to offer Maya. <laughs> Hold on to the rope tightly and climb up quickly. She exerted all her strength to climb up. Unfortunately, her horn got caught in the rope, causing it to snap. Are you alright? Wait for me! Ricky quickly grabbed another rope and jumped down the pit. <gasps> Hold on to me. I will safely lift you up. I... Without hesitation, Ricky embraced Maya and forcefully pushed off the pit's wall, propelling them upwards. <laughs> You've let go of your hand. Oh, I'm sorry. I am Ricky, the hunter of this forest. Where is your home? I will take you there. This man hmm? must be mine. I cannot let him slip away. I am Maya, the princess of the distant castle. My father forces me to marry someone I do not love, leaving me with no choice but to leave my home. <gasps> Can I stay at your home for a day? As soon as I find a new place to live, I will leave immediately. Hmm. Yes, you can stay at my house. Once your wounds have healed, I will take you back. Ah, my plan hmm. to find a husband is about to succeed. <laughs> Ricky led Maya to his home, a grand castle that was no less magnificent than where she lived. Ooh. Your home is splendid. It is vast and ancient. Hmm. As they ventured deep into the castle, Maya became increasingly overwhelmed. She paid special attention to a painting of a snake hanging in the center of the hall. Hmm? This painting was a birthday gift from my mother. Therefore, I cherish and value it greatly. <gasps> mm. This is oh. your room. Feel free to make mm. yourself at home. This room <gasps> is quite frightening. Never mind. Hmm. It must be his preference. That night, Maya couldn't sleep. Restless, she went out in search of food. Passing through the grand hall of the castle, Maya was startled to find the snake on the painting had disappeared, leaving her in utter disbelief. Maya panicked and ran to find Ricky, but to her surprise, Ricky had left the castle without her knowing. Ricky! Ricky! Maya quickly returned to her securely locked room, trembling in fear. The next morning, Ricky knocked on the door and brought breakfast for Maya. She hastily recounted the strange event from the previous night. I've brought you breakfast. Ricky, yesterday I witnessed something very strange. The snake on the painting disappeared. <laughs> you must have been tired and hmm. dreamt it. How could a snake have come out of the hmm. painting? Don't you believe me? Come hmm. with me! Huh? Huh. Look! <gasps> <laughs> you must have been exhausted these past few days, hmm. mistaking things. <clears throat> Maya couldn't accept huh? it and was determined to find evidence. That night, unable to sleep, Maya quietly sneaked into the grand hall 
and waited since early. Hmm. <gasps> Perhaps I have been delusional. But as she was about to return to her room, she heard a noise. <laughs> Maya immediately hid behind a statue and observed a terrifying scene. <gasps> Ricky is the snake! So, you've seen everything? Maya screamed for help, but no magical intervention occurred. In her dazed state, she suddenly remembered her heavenly gift, the seven-colored unicorn horn. Surprisingly, the elderly servant Amel appeared. Lady Amel, thank you for coming in time. Otherwise, I would never have the chance to see my father's face again. Princess, don't be afraid. This is the safest place. Follow this cave path to escape the forest, and I will stay behind to stop him. Hmm. <laughs> don't even think about running away. Lady Amel, save me! Maya was shocked and couldn't believe her eyes when she realized that the elderly <gasps> servant she had known for so long was actually a cunning snake, Ricky's mother. So it was Amel who intentionally opened the door for the princess to escape, then fall into a trap and be saved by Ricky. Everything had been set up. Maya regretted not listening to her father, falling for a handsome stranger which led to this situation. Why did you do this? It was your father who caused the death of the Snake King. I lost my husband, and my son lost his father. This debt, your family must repay! Maya understood that Amel's wickedness today stemmed from her own lineage. Let me compensate for my father's actions and heal the wounds you all suffered. It's too late now. The only way to compensate is with a pair of horns from your family. The power and authority of the Unicorn Clan. Ricky became weakened. He merged with Amos, transforming into a giant snake. The debt must be repaid! Pull your anger onto me! Don't harm Maya! The colossal snake grew even more furious. It turned back and attacked the weakened Unicorn King. My daughter, run quickly! Uh. No, I cannot abandon my father! Maya used all her unicorn strength to save her father. Now, she had lost her powerful horn and became just an ordinary person. As for the Unicorn King, he was poisoned by the snake and could no longer walk. Father, I apologize for not heeding your words and leaving the castle on my own. <laughs> I now understand that you were ensuring my suitor was <laughs> not an enemy of our family. I only wanted to protect you from dark forces, but my intentions turned into uh, control, robbing you of your freedom. Since becoming a normal human, Maya became more skillful and no longer clumsy. The Unicorn King recognized her abilities and orchestrated Maya's love story with a poor but loving young man. 
<laughs> After their marriage, the Unicorn King abdicated the throne in favor of Maya and her husband. They ruled the kingdom together and lived happily ever after. 500 years ago in Dreamland, a realm where magical mm. creatures once <laughs> thrived, a great devastation occurred. After a fierce battle with the Raven King, the Raven King sought to kidnap the precious fairy alchemist, mercilessly slaughtering wherever he went. In the end, the Flower Fairy Clan had to sacrifice half of their kin to steal away the Raven King. Since then, the chief of the Floral Fairy Clan was honored as the ruler of the island. However, the Raven King's imprisonment is merely temporary. Given a day of sufficient strength, he can break free completely. And that day finally arrived. In an instant, the beauty of Dreamland vanished. You have shattered my family, and now it's time for you to pay. Mother of Floral Fairy Peony entrusted all of their flower spirit, the essence of their magic power, to her daughter. This was to protect her and send her back to the past 500 years ago. The fusion resulted in the sacrifice of all the floral fairies. Peony carried a great responsibility to defeat the Raven King before he succumbed to darkness. Peony lost all her strength and was severely wounded, falling into the human world. She also encountered a group of demon hunters who specialized in hunting spirits, stripping them of their magic and selling them to the wealthy. Oh, a floral fairy. How about surrendering yourself to us humans now? Release me at once! Peony was completely drained, feeling helpless and shedding tears. And at her most desperate moment, Ryan appeared. Hmm? It's you again, you little fool! Go away! Ryan had always been slow and clumsy since birth. He had a large body, but a mind no different from a ten-year-old child. Whenever he had the chance, Ryan secretly tried to release the prey of the demon hunters. That's why he was always despised. <laughs> Who are you? Being rejected and driven away, Ryan retreated deep into the forest <laughs> to live. Mm. But beautiful You're so b beautiful. <gasps> What's with the stammering, you foolish boy? <laughs> In the following days, Ryan diligently took care of Peony, <laughs> passionately tending to her wounds. Gradually, Peony was moved oh. by his warmth. Although he was foolish, he was truly <laughs> kind-hearted. Of course, Peony didn't forget her mission. However, she didn't know where to find and gather information about the Raven King now. She only knew that he had a distinctive raven feather-shaped mark on his chest, the source of his power's corruption. Ryan always helped her hmm. gather information about the Raven King. Hmm. On the seventh day, there was no hmm. news about the Raven, but mysterious hmm. incidents hmm. occurred on the streets. It involved the disappearance of a series of young girls reaching maturity. Furthermore, the number of wild creatures in the forest was decreasing. One sleepless night, a disturbing event took place. Something's wrong. Let's go, Ryan. <gasps> no! Get away quickly!
the mark on the tiger's forehead. I saw it at the crime scenes. <gasps> hmm. There are many rumors that in order to gain more power, the Raven King took the lives of many young girls and wild animals to refine his elixirs. This must be connected to him. <gasps> hmm. However, with her current power, huh? she would struggle to oppose him. When her magical <laughs> power was restored, Peony <laughs> bid farewell to Ryan and decided to go to Dreamland to find the clan chief. At that time, her floral clan was not yet the most powerful. In terms of hierarchy, he was her grandfather. <laughs> Nonsense. Time cannot be reversed. And are you truly a floral fairy? <gasps> Everything I've said is the truth. The clan chief's attitude changed, and he immediately welcomed mm -hmm. her into the flower clan. Peony was treated as a true princess mm -hmm. according to the standards of that era. Huh? Day and night, she worked with the clan chief mm -hmm. to find a way to mm -hmm. defeat the Raven King. She also contributed her magical power to strengthen the flower army. Things changed one day. Help me! <gasps> the mark on her forehead! <gasps> Please save me! The floral goddess will take away my soul to refine his elixirs! Ah! Peony <gasps> grew suspicious and secretly followed her. She couldn't believe her eyes when she discovered the clan chief's secret chamber. It held a large number of young girls and various beasts and creatures with marks on their heads. The mastermind behind it all was her grandfather, not the Raven King at all. The destruction of Dreamland was also due to false accusations and the loss of his family. It's all deception! <gasps> hmm. In the end, you also fell for it. From the beginning, he didn't believe her words. He only mm -hmm. played along to exploit her power. Furthermore, mm -hmm. she would be the crucial factor in making his elixirs even stronger. Oh. The most despicable enemy has always been the one closest to me. I won't forgive you. <gasps> hmm. Get her quickly! The gate! Open now! Oh, Ryan! Unsettled about Peony and always longing for her, Ryan silently watched from outside the gate every day. Just seeing her figure appear one more time would make the <laughs> foolish boy extremely happy. When Ryan saw Peony being attacked by floral soldiers, he didn't hesitate and immediately stepped forward to protect her. Don't touch Peony! You're just a weak mortal! You could lose your life! No! Peony was filled with pain and madness, seeing that fragile figure collapse. <laughs> Don't cry, milady. You fool! How can you still speak at a time like this? <laughs> Suddenly, a raven feather emerged from Ryan's chest, glowing brightly. A raven feather! Could it be that Ryan is... The surge of powerful magic transformed Ryan into the Raven King of Legends. I'm not a human. 
Why? The magical tears and intense desire for love towards <laughs> Peony unlocked his true hmm. form. Peony realized that she was the reason behind Ryan's corruption 500 <laughs> years ago. Perhaps in the past, she had to leave, leading Ryan to seek Whoa. revenge obsessively. Ah! Ryan, I really don't know what to do anymore. If she found a way to defeat that sheep, it would mean the end of descendants like her, and the floral clan would be wiped out. However, if she let him continue his actions unchecked, a terrible catastrophe would befall Dreamland. The inevitable battle among her, Ryan, and the chief was unavoidable. But as long as Peony remained safe, Ryan wouldn't be able to fully unleash his power to defeat the chief. For that to happen, even if it pained her greatly, she had to disappear. She needed to find a reason to keep Ryan staying temporarily. Heartbroken, she reluctantly returned to meet the chief. For the future of our clan, I'm willing to give up all my magical powers for you to take over Dreamland. Excellent! Finally, you understand! Before bidding farewell to her floral soul, Peony secretly sent a signal to Ryan. It turned out she tricked him into believing that the chief had taken something extremely important that only she could retrieve. And when she sent the signal, Ryan would surely appear. When Ryan arrived, Peony had already retrieved her floral soul. There was one thing the chief didn't anticipate. Peony's flower soul was mixed with the magic of other floral spirits, giving her tremendous power. Entering the battle meant that she could once again travel through time, return to the future, and create a tremendous explosion, destroying everything the chief had collected. You traitor! You must defeat the evil! My departure is voluntary! Dreamland is innocent! Don't seek blind revenge! Wait, my lady! Wait for me! We will meet again! When she opened her eyes, Peony found everything unfamiliar. Dreamland scenery remained as beautiful as before the destruction. Hmm. Peony hurriedly went to the main palace, where the history of the entire region was kept. 500 years ago, the cruel and wicked chief of the Floral Clan was defeated by a hero named Ryan. After the battle, Ryan was gravely injured and his body was preserved and treated. The succeeding chief of the Floral Clan redeemed himself by providing magical power for 500 years to protect and nurture the hero's body, awaiting his awakening. Although they no longer held the position of island rulers, the Floral Clan still made significant contributions to the prosperity <laughs> of the entire region. Peony knew that it was a bell signaling something. Finally, I fulfilled the promise we made 500 years ago. <laughs> Please subscribe to Whoa Fairy Tale to follow more exciting stories and don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comments. In a world filled with animosity, the four tribes of light, darkness, fire and water have been waging war against each other for centuries.
No one knew exactly when, but demons in the form of lightning bolts began to appear in the lands of the four unicorn tribes, with the four legendary weapons Flamebrand, Aqua Trident, Shadow Blade, and Luminous Bow. The unicorn tribes created a barrier to prevent the invasion of the demons. Despite the conflict among the four tribes, the Unicorn Princess Eclipse, Sola, Blaze, and Marina remained close friends since childhood. They often secretly met in a lush green valley, a place untouched by war, filled with the laughter of children and pure friendship. But one day, Eclipse's mother discovered this unworthy friendship and forbade her from seeing her friends again. When Eclipse turned 18, her mother revealed a shocking prophecy. Eclipse, I need to discuss a matter of great importance with you. What is it? Shadowblade told me that the only way to rule the unicorn world is by combining the four legendary weapons into the elemental nexus blade. It is a sword so powerful that it can even banish demons and bestow immense strength upon its wielder. So you mean we need to acquire those legendary weapons? Yes, all your training and efforts have led to this moment. Bring pride to the huh? Darkness Tribe. Driven by her loyalty to the Darkness Tribe and the bonds of their past friendship, Eclipse decided to heed her mother's words. She was determined to obtain the weapons and become the most powerful being. Huh? Oh, Eclipse, what are you doing here? I miss you so much. I miss you too, but listen, there's an urgent matter. Sola's smile vanished upon hearing Eclipse's intention to acquire the weapons. What nonsense! Your mother's prophecy might not be true! Besides, we have already the barrier formed by the four legendary weapons. There's nothing to fear! But it seemed that Lola underestimated the danger of the demons. Huh? Believe me! Audacious! You're just trying to cause trouble, aren't you? Huh? In her anger, Sola huh? chased after Eclipse vigorously. The power struggle huh? between light and darkness remained evenly matched. Eclipse knew she wasn't capable of persuading Sola at that moment. Huh? Look closely! The barrier can be destroyed at any time! I don't believe it, you traitor! <laughs> ah! Huh? Huh? Eclipse found herself washed up in the land of the water unicorns. Huh? Luckily, Marina, the water unicorn princess, came to her rescue. Marina brought Eclipse back for treatment. She had been unconscious for two weeks, experiencing terrifying nightmares. Marina? Take it easy, you're still very weak. Water unicorns were known for their healing abilities and gentle nature. Hence, Marina couldn't bear to see her friend perish in the river that day. It's not good. We don't have much time left. As predicted by Eclipse, the barrier in the land of the water unicorns was weakening, and even a hole had been broken. Give me a hand! As you can see, the demons are growing stronger, and the barrier is getting weaker. Then what should we do now? I'm on my way to acquire the weapons to combine them into the Elemental Nexus Blade. With it, we can huh? cleanse the world from the forces of darkness. Would you like to join me on huh? this quest? 
trusting Eclipse's words, Marina agreed to join her. In this way, Eclipse successfully acquired the first weapon, the Aqua Trident. Together, they embarked on an adventure to the land of the Fire Unicorns. Why are there so many monsters here? Huh? Huh? Blaze is very cautious when it comes to protecting our territory. Huh? <laughs> In a moment of danger, Marina and Eclipse combined their water and shadow energies, creating a powerful magic star. <laughs> You two, stay right there! You have some nerve! How dare you come here to steal my weapon! Are you so huh? smart but still fail to see the problem? Huh? Look beyond your own barrier! Enough talk! Solif already told me everything! Watch this! Yeah! No! Huh? Blaze, calm huh? down! <laughs> That won't achieve anything. The demons grow stronger, and they will invade the land of fire at any moment. Mm. Hmm. Who said your magic is feeble? I dare the demons to breach the fire tribe's barrier. Unfortunately, the demons had indeed destroyed the barrier of the fire tribe, bringing great peril to their land. <laughs> Release us now! Hmm. Whatever you're up to, I know how to deal with you. Huh? Eclipse huh? quickly unleashed her dark energy, covering the sky, temporarily blocking the demon's sight. Huh? Now you see that? Will you join us in persuading Sola? <sighs> I guess there's no other choice. As expected by Eclipse, the flame brand weapon was acquired. The three princesses returned to the land of the light unicorns. Huh? As soon as they arrived, a rain of light huh? arrows suddenly fell upon them. Eclipse, what trouble are you causing huh? now? Huh? Sola, Eclipse is doing the right thing. My water barrier was almost shattered. That's right. The barrier of the Fire Tribe has also been destroyed. Trust me. Together we will protect the Unicorn World. Fine. It's true that the demons are strong, but I... Huh? You're just like us. The most important thing is to still bring peace to our tribes. I believe a true princess will know what the right decision is. Mm. Ah. All right then. Look, it is the Elemental Nexus Blade! <laughs> we did it! The demons have been expelled! <laughs> yes, the demons are banished, and from now on, this sword belongs to the Darkness Tribe! Eclipse, how dare you! I knew we shouldn't have trusted this little traitor! Give, Give it, it back! back. Return, Return the weapons, weapons to me! To me. No! From now on, the Darkness Tribe will be the new... Truth! Oh! It's shattered! Huh? Eclipse was overwhelmed as the demon rose stronger than ever before, swiftly attacking the Castle of Light, crushing all hope and faith. Eclipse, holding the largest fragment of the sword, remained unaffected by the lightning bolts. 
Please, Marina! Are you satisfied now? The world will be engulfed in darkness as you wished. <coughs> no! Sola! <laughs> Eclipse then walked into the darkness, feeling lost and helpless. The light had vanished from her life, replaced by soulless creatures <coughs> devoid of consciousness. For the first time in her life, she felt profound loneliness. She could no longer speak with others or laugh with anyone. Huh? <laughs> the joyful memories of her childhood flooded her mind once again. The four of them, simply being together like innocent children, represented her happiest moments in life. In the depths of despair, a flicker of hope ignited within Eclipse's heart. She realized that the desire for domination was a mistake. Life couldn't be complete without love and compassion. This is the source of the demons. Give up. You've already lost. Who are you exactly? Why do you seek to bring calamity? I was born from the animosity between the four unicorn tribes. I've been accumulating power, growing stronger day by day. <gasps> I want to plunge the world back into a void of despair where there is no pain, no war, and everything returns to nothingness. Silence! I won't let you wreak havoc any longer! Eclipse made a final desperate move. Even if it meant sacrificing herself, she was determined to bring life back to the unicorn world. The demons were permanently defeated, but Eclipse disappeared, leaving only the fallen sword behind. I can't remember the last time I saw such a beautiful <laughs> rainbow. Eclipse was nowhere to be found, and everyone believed she had sacrificed herself to vanquish the demons. Eclipse, huh? where are you? It's all because of me that my daughter... <laughs> I'm truly sorry, everyone. Huh? At that moment, Sola heard her friend's cries coming from the fallen sword. It turned out that Eclipse's soul was huh? trapped within it. United in forgiveness for Eclipse, they poured their energy into the shattered pieces of the sword. Huh? With the power of the four elements, the sword was restored, and Eclipse's soul was set free. I was truly wrong. I'm sorry, everyone. I will do everything to make amends. From then on, the unicorn tribes no longer competed, but lived happily together. That beautiful princess was raising her bow, shooting the sacred arrow towards the dark force. No matter how hard she tried, she failed and was controlled. So how did she get out of there? Let's find out. Once upon a time, there once mystical creatures in the forest. And human coexisted peacefully until they began to attack people whenever they went into deep forests. Therefore, the human gradually established fortified fortifications as well as destroyed the creatures to protect themselves. And as the years went by, the land welcomed its next heir, the proud, powerful Princess Numa. Along with a sacred bow, which was capable of absorbing the souls of mystical beings to become stronger and the mighty wolf that has been passed down all along. Numa was ready to carry out her lofty tasks. Due to her impatience to become the greatest ruler, Numa decided to do what her predecessors had never done, is taking away the soul horns of the satyr in the deep forest to possess the ultimate power. On the way, Numa met an injured person, so she rushed to help and asked if the injury was caused by a scary creature or not. This wound was caused by my careless fall. But before I met the princess, I was saved by a big glowing horn creature. 
a big creature, but there's no way they would save people. But I'm telling you the truth. Ah, according to your description, his features are very similar to the satyr. So where did he go? Hmm, the creature goes this way, but you must not hurt him. If it's the satyr, once he gets angry, the land will suffer a lot. People are the one who rule this land, so I believe a little satyr won't bring any trouble. <laughs> Despite the advice of the people, Numa kept looking for the satyr. With her skill in finding mysterious creatures that was trained since she was a kid. <laughs> Numa easily found the satyr's hideout. Only when she tried to raise the bow, the satyr suddenly turned to look at her, causing the sacred bow to suddenly vibrate and bloom strangely, wrapping her arms tightly. I can't give up. I must become the greatest heir in this land. And finally, the horns of the satyr were taken under the arrow of Numa. However, the princess was excited about the feat. Then the satyr gazed and made her arm to blush. Not just that, the satyr's body also gradually turned to rock and emitted smoke around. Numa panicked and ran away, but everything around her began to collapse. When Numa woke up, she found herself surrounded by the wolf spirit with some strange creatures and a young man her age. Who are you? What happened to my arm? You did this? Hmm. I am Sun, the sun raised by the mystical creatures of this forest. And if it wasn't for these creatures here who wanted me to save you because you got guilty to the satire and be punished, you couldn't be here to threaten us like that. Is that true, Wolf? It can't be. Humans and mystical creatures are rivals. No way they would save people. And you are hmm. human. You should not live here and get affected by the rude and grumpy actions. Hmm? <clears throat> You can mock me, but you have no right to talk about the mystical creatures who have been carrying me since childhood like that. Follow me. Ah, it hurts. After that, Sun dragged Numa out to see how bad the forest was. <gasps> What's going on? The creatures here saw you took the horns of the satire, the source of his magic. So now he couldn't control the power and creating dark smoke, which is destroying the forest. <gasps> Moreover, the creatures here said that the jewel of the wolf spirit has a strong connection to the spirit sanctuary where the new horns of the satire are kept because the horns are part of the mysterious creature and the only free spirit now. Hmm. So that jewel will glow and show us how to find the horns and lift the curse on your hands. Although Numa understood hmm. what Sun explained, her self-respect did not allow her to cooperate with him and any other mystical creatures. Even if I had to find a way to cure this wound or pay for my mistake, I wouldn't believe we could be on the same team. So even though Sun stopped them, Numa tried to cut them off and leave. However, since she was carrying the curse, her health gradually weakened and not as persistent as before. She had to stop and regain stamina after walking for a while. While resting, Numa saw the children being thrown into the sky by a mysterious creature, so she panicked and decided to rescue. But when she found out that they were just having a good time together, Numa, on the way out for a few days, also realizes that people here lived in harmony with mystical creatures like Sun. Hmm? She was surprised and curious to get to know the place more. Hmm. But suddenly, an explosion happened. Expanding territories made everything soaked in smoke. At that moment, Numa saw Sun appeared and helped people escape the seismicity caused by the explosion. She also wanted to give a hand. Only her cursed arm suddenly trembled, moving uncomfortably and raising its bow towards the other group of the foresters. Fortunately, Sun and the creatures helped Numa control herself. Ah, why is my hand so sore and hard to control? Because the satire hated the destroyer of the forest to expand the irrational territory, when he saw the scene, his curse was strong on him. 
and wanted to borrow your hand to punish them. <gasps> Unexpectedly, there are some people who cause such guilt. So the creatures here are angry and must resist when they see them invading. Mm. In addition, I have always assumed that people and creatures here cannot live in harmony until they see firsthand that all species can have fun together. I understand that I must correct and will go with him to find the new horns for the satyr. Mm. Then they followed the guidance of the wolf spirit and reached the spirit sanctuary. Where has a new pair of horns for the satyr? <gasps> Suddenly, <laughs> Old Face woke up and suggested they solve the puzzle before going inside. You, who wish to enter the Holy Spirit, tell me, where is the coldest place in life? It's where it snows the most. Wrong answer. Why wrong? It's wrong because the coldest place is the human heart. In the past, I myself did a lot of damage to the surrounding creatures, even though I had warned. I'm also selfish. I'm just worried about empowering myself without knowing how illegal deforestation has affected everyone here. So if you know and see the heartache and ignore it without help, it is then that the human heart becomes the coldest place in life. Exactly. You're good, princess. Answering, the gate opened, revealing the new pair of gorgeous horns that made Sun unable to hold back, but rushed to take them. Wait, I missed the horns of the satyr. Very simple, and not so proud like that. What? <gasps> Sun had no idea he had inadvertently awakened the angry monster skeletons here and attacked them. Numa and Sun try to fight the monster, but it's too strong to resist. Not only that, Numa's hand trembled more and more, not allowing her to continue fighting, so she and Sun were defeated easily by monsters. While Sun was trying to hold the monster back, Numa realized that the spirits in the cave were coming towards her archangel as if begging for something. Please, give back our soul, our freedom. It turned out that because the sacred bow had kept many of the creatures' pure souls captive, the other skeletons begged her to set their souls free. However, if Numa snapped the sacred bow, the wolf spirit would also disappear. If she didn't do it, those skeletons would not let them get the horns of the satyr to save the forest and the people. Wolf, do you want me to break the sacred bow because you understand the pain of the souls and also want to heal those grudging skeletons? Seeing the response of the wolf spirit, Numa, though heartbroken, finally broke the sacred bow. The light from the sacred bow radiated brightly helping angry souls to escape supernaturally. The full skeletons are also gradually dissipated and turned into a pair of horns for the satyr. Then together, they brought the new horns to the satyr to lift the curse. In the light of the miracle, the satyr comes alive and helps the forest return to peace, breaking the curse on Numa's arm, as well as giving life to the wolf spirit. Princess Numa, after all this experience, You've had a lot of lessons. Yes, I understand better that I should not be conservative, not take the advice of people who want to be good for me. In particular, I realize that the lives of people and creatures in this forest can live hmm. in harmony and happiness with each other. I'm glad you realize this and hope that you will lead the land for the better. From there, she began to rule the land in a more <laughs> prosperous, sustainable way where people and creatures develop together with sun and wolf. <laughs>